my experience traveling to Panama to go see Boundless, our new home, was so many emotions. Um, it was a very physically demanding day. We had to wake up at like 2.30 in the morning. Um, and Parker's dad drove us to the airport and we had so many checked bags and the checked bags weren't your traditional check bags. They, two of them were insanely heavy, like almost 100 pounds. Actually, they were like 99.9 .9 pounds. It wasn't just clothes or household items, it was tools. One was literally our sewing machine in a huge roller suitcase. Um, and the person at the front desk of the Delta Airlines um, baggage check was just baffled <laughs> at what the heck we were doing. I don't know if I've ever seen the Pittsburgh airport so busy that early in the morning. I mean, it was wild. Um, but I've traveled in that airport quite a, quite a bit and I was able to get us through the alternate security checkpoint, which was great. Um, and so we finally, you know, were able to board our plane and we had a layover in Atlanta. And then we boarded our plane in Atlanta to Panama. Through that whole time, I was just one. I wanted to make sure that our baggage got there okay. But also kind of hoping they got lost because they were so heavy and we were gonna have to take them through customs <laughs> in Panama. I just wanted to kind of get to the point of the day where we were in the taxi on the way to the marina. So cue landing in Panama safely. All of our bag, we got through immigration, all of our bags were in fact there. We had to get two luggage carts and we were going through customs in the early afternoon, mid afternoon. And they were also baffled at what the heck are these two people doing? We were driving there and Johnny's speaking Spanish. He doesn't speak much English and we're learning our Spanish and getting used to that. So that was challenging. Bless Parker's soul. He was in the front seat. So he had like the, the main interaction, but finally we got to Shelter Bay and then we had to find dock carts and we got one dock cart and Parker had to run it down to the boat then run it back to get me where I was waiting with the rest of our luggage. We finally got all our bags on Boundless though and that was the moment where we could just breathe. First walk into Boundless, I'm like shaking the camera. Uh, like. Yeah, so we just got here. It has been an insane day of travel with so much stuff. We didn't think we were going to get through the Panamanian Customer. Customs. They pulled us both aside and checked all of our They're luggage. Like, what the heck are you They're doing? They were like, what is all this stuff? I have like tools and stuff like that. And they, um, they let us go. Here we are in Boundless. And we're going to open it up for the very first time. Just looked up the, the code because we don't know it. And they sent it to us, Julian and Colin. So here we go. Think it'll work? Oh boy. We own a Passport 42. <laughs> Smell test. Smells really good. It smells like teak. You know how when you sand teak, it has that really nice teak smell? Look at this. We got a door that opens up and latches. So three months had passed since our time down here for the sea trial and survey and everything. So walking up to Boundless this time was influenced more by exhaustion than, um, than anything. I was very tired. I was really blown away by the scale of this boat and the 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 magnificence of it. Um, now it, you know she was all covered up with canvas um, in storage mode when we got here. We didn't even know the codes. We were looking up we were looking up notes from uh, Julian and Colin on our phone. Uh, it definitely felt very foreign, like we were kind of walking onto uh, someone else's boat. But opening up the boat for the first time was very, uh, it was a very special moment. Stuck my head down in and did like a smell test because we were always proud of Sea Wind because she didn't smell like a typical boat. Oh my gosh, this is so much better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Gracias. Yeah, yeah. Are they good? 
hot. First meal in Shelter Bay. Cheers. Oh, you're hot. You need the fries, though. Mm -hmm. This is like our comfort food. This is like our first meal today. <laughs> we have like three water bars. Mm -hmm. I ate some almonds and got quinoa salad at like 7 a.m. Mm. While everyone else was eating Arby's. <laughs> so now I get fries and quick <laughs> We just turned the seacocks on to flush the toilet because we're probably gonna have to pee throughout the night. Oh God, it smells so bad in there. The toilet has sat and it got real funky in the bowl. I'll show you. Oh God. Oh, it smells so bad. Here, I'm gonna try and pour some vinegar in it. Oh. I need something to scrub that. I don't know if they have, they didn't have a scrubber or something in the sink. It's like we're squatting on someone else's boat. Yeah. opened the toilet and it was foul like so gross it smelled like rotten ice like that sulfury very strong pungent smell and there was also like i don't say mold it was like ugh. i feel like like it was a sea fan <laughs> growing in the toilet and then there was little tiny baby barnacles down the sides of the toilet that were growing. So we knew that at that moment that the bathroom, getting that situated was going to be a priority. Well, this is the state of things. First night on the boat, we haven't unpacked, we haven't unpacked anything. All we did was basically just bring all of our bags that we had in Johnny's car up into the boat and they're just everywhere. I don't want to start putting any way, anything away, and I think you're on the same page as me, Katie, until we clean, clean. the place. Yeah, I mean, it's sat for three through, months. And, and go through every cupboard and... Yeah. It's a nice boat, it's a but nice. it doesn't feel like ours yet. Not yet. And it doesn't smell like ours yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay. Any thoughts? I want to go to bed. I know, we're We've so been up sleepy. Since 2 a.m. Yeah. I will show them the bed area. So, this is where we're sleeping back here. So, here's the whole boat. And then, this is our aft cabin here where we're going to sleep. There's a fan there. And then, they have all these rechargeable uh, fans that clamp anywhere. They're battery operated. They're to charge with a USB-C, which is pretty cool. Anyway, this is a nice mattress. It's in good shape. All right. Night number one. <laughs> Come here and smile with me. Why do we have to smile? It's sweaty. We'll see you tomorrow. Oh, hello there. Oh, hello. It's our first sleep. Mm -hmm. Give the people the rundown. Yesterday was kind of like a whirlwind. Obviously, we traveled and then we got here and it was so, so, we just aren't used, to, we've been at home in Pennsylvania, you know, so the humidity and the heat is like, hit you and smack you in the face. Not hit, just hit you, just like a smack across the face. So, we finally got like our bags that we needed to bring inside in here and then we have like a bunch of our tools and stuff in the cockpit, like those bags. We haven't even thought about the seven boxes that the marina has right now. So now that we have a full night of sleep and we'll get some breakfast and coffee, we can just kind of sit and make up 
like a priority list of what we want to get done and then like kind of like a plan of what we're gonna do i think the number one thing for us is like it's just things are filthy from sitting for three months gotta do some cleaning yeah overwhelming exciting exhilarating a lot of yeah. things the bed super comfortable Great. Super, super, super comfortable. Today is now the beginning of <laughs> a lot of doing. We're gonna take it slow. Take this is just slow. moving in. And We're taking it slow. There's no hurry. We gave Bound this little talk this morning. Yeah. About how we're gonna make her feel so good. She's at a spa a la Katie and Parker now. And that's about it. So, uh,. Well, I'll show you what we get into today, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, well, I got the bilge opened up. You can see what's going on down there. There's, there's the engine. This is like a lot of the mechanical. It's actually underneath the floor in this boat. It kind of gives you a little bit of a perspective as to how big this thing is. You gotta watch that water. I know. Um, so we have a few hurdles to overcome here in our first days at the marina. One is the water is shut off. There is a very bad drought in Panama right now. Very bad. And so the, uh, I think it's the, the Fort Sherman, like the Panamanian mm -hmm. base. Mm -hmm. They've shut the water off to the marina here. And, um, our tanks are pretty much empty. Well, we have a quarter of a tank in each. Quarter of a tank in each. Well, These... we'll have to look at the thing over here and see. I did. Oh, It's okay. a quarter of a tank okay. in each. Um, on Boundless, there's two water tanks, port and starboard. They're underneath the floor up here in the salon. It's 150 gallons total. So that's like, what, 75 gallons in each tank? 75 and 75. So a quarter of that would be like... So we have like maybe... 30 gallons total, 40 gallons total. Yeah. We so, can always get drinking water at the Chandlery. Like that's yeah. okay, we can- Yeah, we as can far stay. as like us, like the, the Marina restaurant is still working. You know, we ate there this morning. They're still making drinks. They serve water and everything. But if it comes down to it, we might actually have to go make our own water. What we're hoping for, though, is that... We can just um, make it through till they get a water delivery. Yeah, they've been having water deliveries, and there is supposed to be, like, a schedule at each dock, and they'll let us know when they turn the water on, and hopefully we can, like, quickly fill up as much as we can. If we get full tanks, then that's a game changer. It'll, like, last us. We could yeah. really conserve that. We have three things we really want to get done today. Yeah, three things we've been going through. These are basically like um, survival priorities. Yeah. Um, Refrigerator. The first is we want to, well, I say survival. We can survive. We can survive. Yeah, we don't need it, but, but it's like, so hot that, and we want to get some fruit and veggies and stuff. Yeah, and so we're going to clean the refrigerators. There's two of them, one and two, and there's actually two refrigeration units, one over here and one back there. And we're going to get them running today. The battery system and the solar, Sorry. we aren't plugged into the shore power at all. The cord isn't even plugged in. So we're just sitting completely like self-sufficient right now. And so far, it seems like it's behaving just like sea wind. Yeah, it's good. We woke up, the batteries were at like 85%. We ran fans all night and everything. And uh, then uh -huh. now they're 100% and it's not even noon. We just need water and then we need the scrub that toilet yeah because that's gross so but what i wanted to do since the boat is sat for a while i wanted to see what's going on with the bilge and if there's water in it um either rain water or salt water or the third uh thing that could be putting water in the bilge is the water heater back here it's changed it needs changed it's actually leaking julian and colin bought a new water heater and so it's in the box over here and i have to change it out i don't know what the water is down there it's just clear water i mean it doesn't look like there's any oil or fuel in it it's just water in the bilge i don't necessarily want to taste it i mean i do want to taste it to see if it's salt water or what but like it's pretty funky yeah you can 
I mean, all you gotta do is just like stick it and dab it. It's not gonna make you sick, you know what I mean? No. You, have to, you have to, you know, taste yeah, to I see. Yeah, So you can see down there, there's a bit of water. And... A couple inches. It's actually pretty deep and it goes, runs the length of the engine. Um, there is a stuffing box back there, but it's a PSS dripless stuffing box. I guess it's not a stuffing box, it's called a shaft seal. And the water heater, I can see there's a bit of water. That's that that uh, steel plate right there, that shiny plate, is uh, one of our sacrificial zinc anode holders on the outside of the hull. And the water heater is back there, and that's actually wet right there. So I think it's I think it's leaking down right there. So that could be contributing to the bilge. Floor sticky. Yeah, it's because of those uh, anti-slip things that are on the bottom of the carpets. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe those things yeah. like. I gotta dip this. Okay. Oh god. Okay. It's fresh water. That's good. Dude. But also bad because. Did you did you get me doing that? Yeah. It was on my face. One? Yeah. Okay. But also bad because fresh water is hot. Come precious on. Precious right now. Precious. Okay, so we have, here's bilge pump number two, and this is bilge pump number one. These are similar. So this says leave on auto. This was off when we got here, and I'm kind of glad because I'm aware of what was in the bilge now before, and so it hasn't been maintaining while we're gone, so I actually know what's up with the bilge here, which means that, like, there's not salt water getting in, and there's must not be a lot of rain water either. Of course, it hasn't rained a lot, so. All right. So here, auto. Okay. So I think that's the one on the right down there. I don't even know which like through hull on the outside it discharges from. I always wanna, you know, I'm gonna have to figure out where on the transom it even exits or on the side of the hull or anything, something like that. I just see the hoses down here under the floor. They just go aft. So, you know, it's good to know exactly where to look when you're pumping bilge water out. Right. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. She says, right. She understands. Right. Right. <laughs> Just having an adventure. <laughs> oh man. It feels so it feels so crazy to be on this boat. I like it still doesn't it feel like we're squatting? Yeah. It feels it I said that last night, but it feels like we've broken into someone else's boat and we're just squatting on it right now. And like starting to fix things on someone else's boat. But um She's in good shape. We're not gonna do like a tour right now or anything. This is more like a candid view into like, we just walked onto this boat. We have no idea how anything works and we gotta figure it out. And also there's a water shortage. <laughs> so, <laughs> surprise. I was messaging my mom, just like telling her about the drought and stuff. And cause we were in a drought at home. But the thing is you don't feel the effects of climate change like that because you're constantly just like we have water it's fine we have water we have water you know mm -hmm. we'll say western pa where we're from it's it's really hard to feel the effects of like a water shortage um there's been times where the water's been contaminated you know like with lead you know or undrinkable where there's been boil advisories and stuff like when i was living in pittsburgh so there's like water quality issues because of poor infrastructure but as far as just like plain not having water, you know, where they're like, no, we haven't had water in four to five days. Um, and they're trying to get another truck, you know, it's like, 
it's just I'm writing like a little post on Instagram just saying like for the folks at home or people we know if you're in a situation where you're you're not even thinking about water like maybe just today like practicing little water conservation techniques like don't run the water when you brush your teeth don't run the water when in between doing the dishes like when you need it don't let yeah don't leave it on while you're it on take a shower only as long as you need to take a shower and i'm gonna say when we're on land we it's, use so we much don't, more we water. Don't, yeah, we don't think about it. Because, I leave the water on while yeah. we're doing dishes. Yeah. I, it's, it's like... it's We're not preaching this because it's just like, oh, actually, we just need... like we're. It's almost like I'm telling myself, we just need to, you know, when we are in those moments, to be more cautious of it. So that's my message for the day. And uh, we'll be fine. I'm not worried. I don't feel worried. It's more of just... It's, it's an, an inconvenience. inconvenience. It's, um, and I feel more concerned about the state of like the area versus like we have a water maker if we need to go make water we'll do it so are you gonna put the floorboards back yeah i'm gonna in? put all these floorboards back gonna in here now and i got a i got an idea of what's going on under here i see some water coming from over there and the water heater is underneath our bed right here and so we're just gonna start getting into some stuff Comparing it to sea wind, it's so nice. All of these floorboards come out. And so the access to the whole bilge is so much better than on sea wind. It's, uh, well, well, we'll talk more about like this boat later, but. When we learn more about it. Yeah, when we, when we learn more about it. <laughs> clean in here. I cleaned all the way back to the, there's the sink drain through hall. All of that. Oh, this is clean. Got all of our cleaning supplies here. There's a drinking water filter. These are the two sink drains. And then I took the two pieces of shelf out from right here. Yeah, this piece is broken right here. Uh, I'm gonna have to either make a new piece or fix this or something like that, but that'll be for a later date. So the philosophy that we uh, have adopted for the first few days here is, well, you need a kitchen because everyone has to eat. So we're cleaning the whole kitchen first and then Katie has been detailing the bathroom, which has gone really well. All right, back to the time-lapse.
one thing that I found is this piece of uh, copper bonding wire has corroded away and it was down there on the through hall down there, the, uh, the sink drain through hall, but it's a secondary bonding that goes to another through hall, which is up here, which is for the scupper drain. Um, oh no, that, no, the scupper drain's back there. So that is for the, oh, the bilge pump, the bilge pump through hall that is in here. So we're finding a few problems along the way, but nothing insurmountable. All right, so here's the sink, or the sink, here is the sink. Uh, so here's the refrigerator. This is the cold coil and it's built out of fiberglass. Here's the cold control, kind of like you would have the dial in a refrigerator. And it's two tiers. So this is a teak grate that doesn't come out because of the evaporator being in the way, but it's all right, I was able to clean it pretty well. All the walls were in, are in really good shape. And then down here, we have this door that swings shut. This this thing needs, this is a little loose right here. This needs to be tended to a bit to make this work a little better. You can see how that is loose. Anyway, so we have this door that opens up and then there is a bottom tier that has its own teak grate. How cool. This here, the second box, is the second freezer or, a, uh, I'm sorry, this the second refrigerator or a freezer. And you can see it's also the same style fiberglass box, but they have foam that has been laid over the walls for extra insulation. And it's okay, it's bo broken through the, the foil a little bit. Another teak grate, and then it just goes down kind of contours to the hull. That's a curved surface down there and another evaporator coil. They were chipping ice off and poked into the, into the coil. This is the, these are the loops for the refrigerant to run through. Anyway, they had that brazed and fixed and I guess it's been working fine since. Beautiful built-in cabinet makeup bag of shelves. Things that I don't really, but like little makeup thing right there. Mm -hmm. Garbage can, toilet that's clean. Thing. Okay, now you can go back. Okay. I clean the mirror so don't make smear your greasy paws on it. Sink is all wiped. Ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Razors, little tools, razor blade replacements, hair ties, extra toothbrushes, clips for towels. Wow. This is all of our medical stuff, which is a lot now, which is good. Tests, first aid, creams. Over here. This is like all of our personal stuff, um, sunscreen. This is like the stuff we use on like a daily basis. Toothbrush, uh, soap, and then this is like, mm, I thought this, I think this might be my favorite little container. Chapsticks, floss, all my like face cream samples, and more floss. Nice. I don't know why, I just think that's like the cutest one. And then over here is the shower. I like that with the shower curtain when I needed new stuff, I can like hang it on this hook. Oh yeah. And then I just wiped everything down in here. This is the thing that will be on the floor when we shower, like right here. That one. 
So is this a tongue shower? Or, or a stand up. There's stand up a ton of room. I even have like a half a foot bu so. above my head. That's it. I'll hook. Cool. Yeah, Good. Oh, I don't think they're here. I think they're down here. <laughs> okay, so we have another electrical panel that is here. And so we have refrigerator and refrigerator. Oh, this one's broken. Hmm. Look at that. Wow. That breaker's broken. Okay. So that one's turned on. Mm -hmm. So is that one? Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna turn it up. What does it go to seven? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put it on like three and a half. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then this one is also off. So, oh, there we go. I'm gonna turn it to four, because they have some, they have a mark on four. Okay. There you go. Pressure's running. I hear refrigerants running through them. That hissing is it uh, getting the liquid getting pushed through a really small orifice hole and flashing off an into orifice. yeah, it's called an orifice. I know it just sounded like an orifice. And it flashes off into a gas from a liquid, and that is actually what. Um, Does this have to go back in there now? Uh, I'm going to leave it off for right now. That's what does the cooling in a refrigerator or an air conditioner or anything. It, it pumps uh, liquid refrigerant that the compressor has compressed into liquid from the vapor coming back. And it gets pushed through a really small orifice hole and it flashes off inside those coils in the, in the boxes. And the, cha the phase change of from liquid to the gas is what does the cooling. Um, kind of like how when you have, when you're wet and you get out of a pool, then you start getting cold because the water is in liquid form on you and it starts evaporating off. And so that is basically the principle of refrigeration. So Katie just closed the two doors, nice brass hinges with hooks on the walls to keep them up. That is a little bit of... A bit of damage there, but that's just the formica, and it's okay. new chapter together <laughs> in our new home we bought a boat together that we just moved on to three weeks ago going to welcome you into episode one of our new life here in Panama yeah. on Boundless. A new boat, mm -hmm. a new home, a new country. So many new things going on and mm -hmm. kind of wondering, you know, how everything's going to unfold. So we're excited to take you along for the ride. Let's do this thing. All right, here we go.